Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digi Digitize video. I am Sue from OML Embroidery. So today we are going to work on a cute little applique and it's we called it beginner intermediate because we're going to do some special effects and there's a couple ways of doing it. I did the design, I loved it and I changed everything and I showed it to Don and he said that's fantastic but he saw it in a complete different way so what we decided to do is that I'm going to do a video on how I see the design and Don's going to do a separate video doing it completely differently so it can show you you know think outside the box think differently and that you can make more than one style of design from a JPEG. So we're going to show you all this, but first we're going to do it my way. So this is the video of my way. Um, I decided to do it as an applique. I thought it would be really cute as an applique. So we're going to do that first. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is bring in our image. So we go up here and by the way, I'm in studio, but you should know that. But I'll say it anyways. So we're going to go image, import, and conveniently I've put it on my desktop just to make things faster because otherwise I'd have to go through a network to our server, blah, blah, blah. All right, do you want to scale this image to fit into your current hoop? You can, depending on what size your image is. Now I've already checked mine out and it's fine at the size that it is. So we're going to bring this in and let's look at the image. Now you can see why Don and I saw things differently. He doesn't understand how I got applique from this because that it, he sees shading right here and different things like that. Um, part of life is seeing things differently. He sees it as like this is a chalk sketch and I see it as an applique. There's no reason why, there's no wrong way, there's no right way. It's how you see what you're doing. So I see it in a different way and that's okay. You may be looking at this and see it in a completely different way and that's fine too. So let's start off with the applique part. Now you could probably do the bow and you could probably do whatever this is, ferns or I don't know what it is, part of a tree, I guess. I don't know. I saw it in a different way and I'm going to show you a technique of how I think it should be done. But I see this as an applique and I, I see the candle. Um, I guess I see it as an applique because I have some material that's red and it has a little sparse silver design on it. And I just kind of thought that would be good. So we've sized the picture. Um, we, I'll show you how to check on it. Uh, edit image window. And because you always want to digitize at the size that you want it to be finished at. And that's basically perfect for me. That's what I want. And you can do a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. But for now, that's fine. But I already knew that, so I didn't make any changes. But that's how you would do that. Um, we have a nice grid behind us. So let's start with the applique part. And there's two ways of doing it. And I'm going to show you uh, an easy way and a little bit more difficult way. So we're, I picked, sorry, I did that a little too quickly. I picked the outline, open outline one. And we're just going to plot our stitches. I'm not going to zoom in too much because I think you can see clearly how to do this. And I, I'm just doing things quickly. I don't think anyone needs to spend a whole lot of time watching me plot nodes and points, right? So uh, by the time I'm done, it's not going to be as perfect as I'd like. So just always understand that I'm not going to take all the time that's necessary. So I just outlined the candle and we're going to pick applique and then we're going to generate stitches. I always have to click twice, don't know why. So that, that puts everything down. Now my problem is I don't necessarily want this to be closed. You probably should, but you don't have to. Again, I always say think outside the box and we'll do things a different way. So I, I don't necessarily want that closed, but you know what's it? You can tell it's an applique by over here. 
and it, it has all your stitches. It has everything that you want. So I'm going to go back. So you can do it that way, and it's not a problem. We can work around the stitches behind there, but I see things differently, so I'm going to do things differently. So let's try this. And I'm just going to show you how I want everything. So what I'm doing is I'm just right clicking and I'm deleting the stitches that I don't want. So now we have it up here. Now I'm not going to do applique. I'm just going to do the sample stitch. There we go. And it's probably going to close it because I can't remember what I picked. No, it didn't. So there we go. That's our tack down stitch. I like that. So then we're going to um, duplicate it. And then we're going to go parameters and now we're going to, sorry, that's the placement stitch. And now we're going to do the tack down stitch. And what we want to do is we don't want underlay on it. The density, um, that's fine for now. I'm going to show you what it is. And then let's place it. Oops. Let's hit OK first. How about that? Way ahead of myself, as always. So we want to place this and it wants to be, I guess the better way of doing it is copy because then you can get it exactly how you want. And for some reason, I just didn't do it that way. Don't know why. So let's check. Let's check how close we are on, you know, it's fine, but how about we do it the right way? So let's delete that because it takes too long to fiddle about it. I'm very precise, so I don't think I can even go on without doing it. And we have to do it a couple times. So this is the right way. So copy and paste, and it puts it exactly precisely on top, which is what we were going for in the first place. So let's go to parameters, and we are going to make it a satin stitch, and we do not want underlay, so let's take that off. There's no need for underlay on it. The width, um, I like to make it just a smidge smaller. Let's apply. And density, we want that right up there. So maybe that high. I always try. I like doing it this way and then I try. That is probably fine. It could be a little bit less. Apply. Because we want it to hold down the fabric, right? So there we go. So density is up here. We'll put it at about 17. So apply, generate stitches. Now all we have to do, um, paste. And did it work? Yes, we have one, two, three. So, but it has this, oh, <laughs> I know, because it has the same density. So all we have to do is go into parameters and we're gonna put sample, no, satin stitches and density and we don't need an underlay again. We just don't need it, thank you. And there we go. Now, the only other thing you have to do is change the colors. So the pink, or purple, I guess, is going to be the placement. Then we'll make yellow the tack down stitch because you do want your machine to stop with everything. Actually, we can do it red, but we still want it to stop, right, in case you have to make adjustments. Um, so I think we'll make this one red because the fabric I'm going to use has that red. So there's the applique the way I like to do it. Now you could do column stitches and put a little more detail in it. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so let's pretend we have our applique fabric down and now we're going to do a little bit of the detail work. I originally designed it with this line with column stitches and I left this one out completely. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking maybe just either a run stitch or a sketch stitch might look a bit better. It's a bit smaller than I'd like. I think if you were doing it any bigger, you could do some really beautiful column stitches and make it look awesome. But I think for this one, I'm thinking this kind of stitch. Now we do have everything in the wrong order, so I'm going to extend this so it will be right up against it and look really good. So let's change that to sketch. Now a sketch stitch is somewhere in between a run stitch and a satin stitch, so it's a lot thinner. It doesn't go up and down like this one. It goes kind of part way. 
So it looks really good on smaller things. It looks like a smaller version of a satin stitch. So let's see what that's going to look like. Yeah, it doesn't look the greatest in 3D, but I think it'll look fine when we stitch it out. In fact, I think it'll look great. So let's do that again, the same thing, and we're going to tuck it up right beside so it looks good when we stitch it out because obviously the um, the applique has to be done first because this is on top of the applique. Fantastic, looking good. Generate. There we go. Let's check our 3D. Yep, that'll make it perfect for when we put the wick in. But let's move down the candle. And if you want, if you can't see very well, if you want no distractions, you can take off the work that we did. Now we are going to, with my mouse, zoom in a little bit, and I'm gonna show you a trick of how to make these go pretty quickly. So I clicked, let me do it again so I can show you. We're gonna do a fill stitch closed path, and I'm gonna put a point right down, and then I'm gonna to go to shape, and then I'm going to, this is really small, so I'm gonna pick ellipse four elements. And I'm going to pull out a circle that's pretty close in size. Then you right click two elements, and then I'm gonna generate. So you can see how many stitches is in that. That's a bit small. I am actually gonna make it a little bit bigger. So it looks pretty good. Let's generate those stitches. And we're right up close, but that's what it's gonna look like. So you could even make it a little bit bigger. You can experiment, you can do different things with it. But for now, we are going to, let's try the copy thing again. You can duplicate, let's do it, and it'll put it there, and we want these to be touching. And I'm gonna show you why after. So duplicate again, and we wanna follow along the curve, basically. Um, again, I've explained before on other videos, use the picture as a background, but it doesn't have to be your whole entire idea. You can change things. I often do it, even when I prepare for these videos or for classes, um, I do it one way, and then I come up with something else that I like even better when I'm digitizing. So the pictures are simply a backdrop and you can come up with your own ideas on the fly. Now this seems to be taking a while, but it's, it's not so bad. I, I might make the whole thing bigger. So why don't we try it another way? Because of course there's more than one way to do everything when you're doing embroidery in Embird. So I just did paste and moved it and then paste and move it. There is probably a shortcut, but I'm a mousy kind of person. It's always going to put it back there, but that's okay. So either way, it's just as quick, right? Now remember to make sure these touch. It doesn't have to be a whole lot, but we want them to touch because we're going to make the rest of this candle a whole lot easier. I automatically go to duplicate, so I'm, I'm going to keep working with that. So now we're getting to the top. So duplicate again. And again, we want to just follow along with the curve. Don't worry about the variable sizes because this is going to be much smaller when we're stitching it out. So you don't need to vary the size. Why? Because it's really not going to show. That's why, because it's small. If you do this bigger, then maybe if you wanted that added detail, that's what you should do. So look at that. Now we have a whole bunch of these and look at in our who. That's a lot, but let's zoom out and they should have generated. Let's have a look, see how pretty that is? I think that looks kind of groovy. They could be a bit bigger so they show up. So we can, whoops, we can do that. And we'll get them all. We could group, there's always a way, there's always a way. And once you have it grouped, you can pull it out and see it's just gonna make the circles bigger and that still we want it to look like it's wrapping around. So let's look at it in 3D. Oh, we need to generate these guys, generate stitches, and then look at it in 3D. Yeah, and I think that looks a little bit better. Um, I think that's enough detail that we want. Now we want this pulled in a little bit. 
Now all I did was group them and it's going to take a lot of work for the machines to stitch out each circle and trim or there'll be jump stitches but there's a way around this. What we're going to do while we have our group selected we're going to go to transform and we're going to go to one of my favorite things, I love transform, union. So we're going to make all of those into one with that shape. And I think that's pretty cool. You have to remember to go back and delete your original one. There we go. Now let's put our other things back on so we can see how it looks. And we have to generate those stitches so we can see it, how it looks. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I kind of like it. Let's step back further. Well, not maybe not that further. Well, it doesn't look like a whole lot yet, but we have to picture it with details on it, right? Designs, details. I think we want to make these gold. So I'm going to be using a really nice gold thread, but for this, we're, we're just going to use uh, yellow and I'll be using like a metallic gold thread to stitch it out and I think that would make it look even better. So all I did was duplicate the whole group. Duplicate, duplicate. We're using that a lot today but it does save you time. There's no point sitting and digitizing them all separately and I like symmetrical. You don't always have to be symmetrical though but I like that. And so duplicating really works for me. Let's take a look. See, that looks fine. Always remember when you're looking in the, the 3D, it's not, you know, perfect of, as to what it's going to be, but it gives you a good idea. So how about we work on the flame? So we need closed, and I think this is pretty thin. Maybe we can use, see, you're always thinking on the go, right? We don't want it closed because you're not going to zoom in and plot that out. It won't stitch out enough. I think we can bend this a little bit and we can use our sketch stitch. Let's generate it. Generate. I always do that. It's me. I know. So let's make that black. Let's take a quick peek. Yeah, doesn't that look perfect? Okay, so now we're going to do a couple tricks. We're working on the flame. And we're going to do a couple tricks. We will, don't worry about the wick right now. We're going to move that so it shows up. Uh, I just wanted to see how it looked. So there we go. Let's do our flame. And what I'm going to do is generate it. And it's just straight stitches. And I, I want it to be kind of, you know, maybe orangey, um, which is fine. Then go into perimeters. And then we can play around. And you can see your results. It's even better actually if we do this, we go into 3D and then we hit the parameters. And then you can really see what you're doing. And I like to bring everything close like this. So for this, we want it to look, you know, flamey. Right now that looks a flame shape, but I don't think it looks very flamey, does it? So I want to put a wave in it. There we go. And what you can do is change different things and then go apply. See, that looks pretty cool. I kind of like that. You can change that around, you know, a fair amount. Apply. Yeah, it puts a wave into it. Why don't we try it like this? And I find this a lot easier. No, I don't like that. A lot easier of a way to, you know, experiment with stuff. See, to me, that looks kind of flamey. I might... I don't think it's too small to mess around with gradient, so I wouldn't suggest that. I don't want any underlay for it. We could change the random broadening and change a few things a little bit, but I think that's pretty good. So let's apply that. Okay, now we're going to take that off and let's go back to our normal view because I want to catch the inside part. So let's do that, and we're going to do the same basic shape, and that looks good. And again, don't worry about the wick. We're going to fix that after. Let's generate. Now, we did the other one orange, so why don't we make this yellow? Now, remember, these are going to be gold, not yellow. I'm just, I'm just showing yellow. 
So we should probably do a different yellow. Um, brighter, darker, eh, I'll remember. So let's put this back on and let's go into our 3D and see it kind of has a curve to it. I kind of want to move, let's go to the yellow. I kind of want to move that over a little bit. Now what I'd like to happen is for this to blend in with that. So it's, and it's hard to see it on 3D, but we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did with the orange. And it's going to blend the threads a little bit and I'm gonna change the density. I'm gonna move that up just a little bit and it's again, it's gonna be hard to see it on the 3D. I'm gonna take off this because we're trying to blend and I'm going to add the same wave. Now it was just up and then down a little bit. So that's fine, so apply. So it doesn't look like it blends here, but it will when you stitch it out. And it'll have quite a lovely effect if you do it properly. And it's fantastic. So again, kind of looks kind of weird, but it's okay. It's going to be okay. Let's move down. So we've got half done already, and that really didn't take us long at all. Now I'm looking at it and this, um, Don saw it in a completely different way, but I came up with kind of a cool trick that kind of added a little bit of artsy to it. Now we're going to do it symmetrical because I like that. I zoomed in a little bit and I don't want to mess up these stitches. So I'm going to do this sort of design and it doesn't have to be exact we're going to do it randomly of course and i'm going to show you a neat little trick to kind of make the edges a bit fuzzy and the effect um looks really good now don's idea was to do sketch stitches and a few other tricks to make it look the way he saw it and i think his is going to look great but I think this is just as good and it's a really neat trick and I think you'll find that you use it quite often. So we're just kind of going through this, the basic shape and we're gonna go around the bow, which is fine. And we're gonna have a little overlap with my fancy stitches, but that's okay too because the bow is gonna cover it up. So we don't have to be, too precise here activate the last one and there we go finish our object and again what I'm going to do is generate so we can play with the parameters so I'm going to make this green I don't like that green so I'm going to make it a brighter green there we go it shows up a little better right click parameters and let's take a look at what we can do with this now I kind of want it to be light so I'm going to take off probably most of the underlay and I'm not going to put a wave in it, but I am going to use this random broadening. And what that means is kind of a funny word. It's just going to fringe basically the edge. And what you need to do for something like this is simply experiment with it to come up with the look that you want. And this is why I do it this way. So I just picked some numbers and that is probably it. I think that probably looks good, maybe a little bit less on one side. So click apply, but see how you can play around with it to get the look that you want. And I like that. So let's step back a little bit and let's look at it on 3D. See, it kind of has a fringy kind of artsy sort of effect and it did go over that and I think that's going to look great. So you can play around with that and you can make it more or less fringy looking. But for right now that's good enough. Let's duplicate and then let's go up to transform and then we're going to flip it horizontally so we can get it around on this side and place it in the exact same spot. And we may have to move that around a little bit. Now, if you're noticing, this side of the bow isn't the same as that side of the bow. True. I You can digitize this side. You could do this side, this side, and then this part of the bow and that part of the bow. That will work out fine. 
Um, I'm going to do it so it's symmetrical because that's the look that I want. So I'm going to do this part of the bow and then flip it because I want a symmetrical bow. So let's do the bow part now. Let's not worry about how this matches up because the bow will make it match. So let's go along the outside of the white edge so we make sure everything fits. Now if you have problems seeing through the green, you can always hide it before you start digitizing the bow. And I think we'll do it this way. I actually, when I uh, was preparing for this, I did it a different way, but I'm actually curious to see how this way is gonna work out. So generate, now we want this red because my material is gonna be red. Um, I think that'll look fine. Now we're going to do some detail work, but first let's duplicate it and then again transform and flip. Where's my flip? Flip horizontally. So then we're going to put it right up there and we have to remember what we're doing to make everything fit. And we're going to move this down because now we have the outline and it's going to fit on the inside a little bit if you remember and that should be okay. So the bow is going to be symmetri symmetrical because I'm using the background as just a guide. You don't have to do exactly that. So okay let's work on the right hand side of the bow and we're going to put some detail in it and what we're going to do is carving and I did that too quickly. You select the part that you want and you go over here and this little symbol shows you exactly what we're doing and it's the carving tool. And what you're going to do is basically a running stitch. Now carving will not work if the item is too small. It will absolutely not work. So you have to make sure you have enough space. So I just placed my stitches and it really doesn't look like anything happened until you switch to 3D and see it carved it out and it looks a little more detailed and I really like it. So let's do another part. So let's click on the bow, make sure you're clicking on the bow in its entirety and let's do this detail. There we go and generate and this is where you can play around. Let's look. You can see that and it's going to look like a bow. So let's do the same thing on the other side, except for we'll follow the marks that are in here. So let's click on that bow and let's go to carving. Where did my carving go? Oh, I missed it. There we go. And let's follow these lines just to make it look, you know, asymmetrical, symmetrical, but not quite. So that's the first part and generate. And let's take a look at it. Yep, see, I like it. It makes it look like the bow was tied a little bit differently. Now we also want this detail, but we're going to have to change it just a little bit to suit the bow because remember, we didn't copy it exactly, which is great. As long as you remember to make it work. Now it starts from here, so we're just not going blindly, but kind of blindly. And it was just here to here to make that section and then there was a bend to it. It doesn't have to be exact, but it'll still look good. So let's look at it in 3D. Yep, you can see it and it looks like a bow. Loving it. Why don't we generate these green stitches just so I can see if I've matched up properly. Generate. There we go. Let's check our 3D. And I have. Isn't it looking good? Okay, so now we need to finish our bow. Closed, and now let's look, and if you can't ignore the background picture, then you need to, you know, lighten it or get rid of it for now. We're almost done anyways, because if we were to follow the background picture, none of this is gonna connect. And we want this to overlap a smidge because that's what a bow looks like and that's what you want to do. So there we go and I'm looking at the red lines, not anything else. It's a bit hard to see but you can do it. A little bit of overlap and then we're going to close it. So generate 
Excellent. And you can make that a satin stitch too. It should be small enough for that, depending on what size you're doing it on. Now looking at the bow, this part is done first. And remember to touch it up to your work, not the picture. And that should do. And there you go. And back to the beginning and generate. And you can change another nice effect would be to change the angle of the stitches so it looks more like it's going down. So again, remember not to go by the background picture. If you started here, it's going to be tucked underneath. But we can work with that. And there we go. We're going to make a nice swoop. And don't worry about the green stitches underneath. A little bit of overlap uh, shouldn't matter. Really depends on what you're stitching it in. I'm going to be doing it on as like a quilt block with heavy-ish material. So a little bit of overlap won't show at all. So there we go. Looking good. Our bow is looking pretty. Everything's looking pretty. See how the effect is? And I think that's lovely. If this effect here isn't enough for you, if you want more details, I mean, we can add a few detail stitches in. Um, the way I did it before is I did it in two pieces. Uh, another thing I see, I would like this part to extend down. So just as I'm looking at it, because I want it to be tucked down um, underneath. We're doing it first, so all of this is covering it over. See, that looks better. You do have to remember when you're cutting your applique, it ends here. It's going to need just a titch more. So if you feel better about it, you can pull it down to the bottom here so you have enough material. Because remember, the way we digitized it, we're not tacking down or doing anything in the bottom. So you've got to make sure it stays nice and flat. So you really do need to pull everything down. And now look at that. We have a wonderful applique design. And remember, these are going to be in gold and it's going to look great. And the stitch out of this with a little wave in it is going to look great. Now, didn't I have to move something? I think I had to move the wick. I forgot about that. We want the wick to stitch after the flames. Yes, that's the look I want. I almost forgot to do that. Now, when I'm done everything, I always go and I look through and see if there's anything we can change. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to completely ignore the background picture, and I'm going to move that to a little bit to the middle, maybe a little bit more I can make it. And now we should go ahead and put in some lettering. So why don't we do that? Just because it's Merry Christmas. Let's see what I've got here for my fonts. Um, oh, let's do that. Let's do Merry and then Christmas. And I think that'll look great. Generate, just thinking about it for a few minutes. And I do want this just straight across. I do want it a little bit bigger. Um, you could do a little more fancy stitching. You could move it, you know, Merry Christmas or uh, even better, Merry Christmas and do it like that. For what I want, this is this is exactly what I want. Now I have to decide whether I'm going to do it in green or red because remember my material has red in it. And I think green and I think I'm going to pick this funny green that I picked before. Yeah, you know what? I think I like that. Now, another thing you could do for, uh, you know, to add a little more pizzazz is that you could put an outline on your bow. Um, I think it would look good. Uh, I don't know. I, I think you could. And you could also put with a simple um, running stitch, sample stitch, you could accentuate some of these details and kind of, you know, add some. You could even do this, and I'll show you how that'll look. 
and you could add maybe some shading details on that we can go through and do that and just that's all it is is you're just basically making your own shading to give your design a little more depth and we do want that in black because we are shading and it doesn't look like much there but see if you hold it back I could have moved those over a little bit. So if you wanted to go through and add those details, because I think it might be nice to have this outlined. I, I guess we could, I guess we could do it. So convert and we want to do create outline from fill and it came up as red. So you don't necessarily have to do it black, but I'm going to do it black just to show you. There you go. I guess maybe that would look pretty good convert create outline from fill and we want this black and we're gonna have to go back and put everything in order so it all matches see doesn't that add another dimension to it and it's super easy to do it's just a few clicks and you know what you can always try and if you don't like it then just delete it but detail, uh, embroidery is all about the detail and all about the perfection. Look at that. See, I guess I do really like it. I didn't do it on my test one, but I think that adds another dimension to it. And depending on your background design, you could even make the outline, you know, white. And if you like these shading, you can do it on the other side. Um, I think the the shading needs to be changed. I didn't do it close enough to the edge, but bring it right out there and we can call it an outline. And what do you think? If you wanted to as well, you could even, you know, put a little star design here and there on the bow and make it a printed bow. I just like things plain. I like how this is abstract. You can play around, we talked about it, but you can keep playing around with the random broadening and see if you can get it a little more to your liking if you don't like what I did. There are so many settings to make it look better. I would probably change the stitch direction and put it up and down or on an angle and see if that looks better. But I think all in all, that's a really cute design and you can always personalize it you can put you know merry christmas and around the flame and then put a family name or put the family you know merry christmas in a curve and put the name dawn or something like that and really quickly and easily we've made a beautiful applique with it's a little more complicated it's not a complex applique but appliques really shouldn't be complex for sure um, but I think you can come up with a few ways to use this and a few ideas and I think it looks really pretty now we've done applique we welded items, we used random broadening, and we used wave stitches, and we've fixed the dent density so they blend in. So that's getting up there, that's adding a little oomph to your embroidery and make it, you know, a little outside the box, a little extraordinary, and I think with gold thread, I'm looking at this thinking it's gorgeous. Anyways, thank you very much and uh, show me your work. Let me know what you guys come up with. I love to see it. I absolutely love to see it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video, maybe a Halloween design or another Christmas design. Um, happy digitizing and keep calm and digitize on. Thanks everyone.